All right, in this video, we're going to discuss how the new SHSAT is scored just as soon as we finish a commercial break with a future SHSAT test taker. Hi, Ola. What's two plus two? Mm. Three. No! Four. Cuatro. As you may know, there's a math section and an ELA section. Each exam is 90 minutes. It entails 57 questions, 10 of which are for field testing, so 47 questions will count toward the exam. Unfortunately, you won't know which 10 are not included, so be careful and pay attention to all questions. And when you combine those two scores, you'll get a composite score, which the maximum raw composite score would be 94 points in this case. It used to be 100, but now it's 94. As you may know, that score is then converted to a scaled score, and it's really the scaled score that counts. It's a scaled score that will determine your cutoff level, in other words, your admission, to a particular specialized high school or not. Now, others have pointed out those scores are calibrated, and that's correct. Each group of people or each person individually will take a different version of the exam. So if you take a very difficult exam, your score will probably be calibrated upward. If you took an easy version of the exam, it will be calibrated downward. In theory, it's all calibrated to equal out. Now, it's at this point I want to clarify a couple details. So if, for example, you got 40 raw points out of 47 points on the math exam, you would have a score of about 85%. It is incorrect to multiply that 85% by a 400 scaled score total to get a scaled score of 340. That's not how it works. I've seen that done before on a couple of videos, so it's worth clarifying. The relationship between raw score and scaled score is not direct. It's not a linear relationship except for the range in the middle, roughly from 20 raw points to almost 40 raw points. Each point outside of that range can be worth twice as many scaled score points, and on the low end, even more. So make sure to look at an appropriate conversion table from raw scores to scaled scores. Even an imperfect raw score to scaled score conversion table will be vastly superior to just simply multiplying the percentage correct by 400. That is not correct. Another problem with this ramp up in scaled scores on the high and low end is that some indicate they have, as a result, the ultimate strategy, the hack for the SHSAT, a way to guaranteed improve scores. That could not be further from the truth. In fact, the only time that's going to benefit a test taker will be if they're scoring around 80-85% on one section of the exam, say math, and not so well on the ELA side of the exam. The normal inclination is, well, let's focus more of our work strategically on improving our weaker section, the ELA. But that might not be the correct way. In fact, it would be better to improve your score 10 percentage points from 85 to 95 on the math side while ignoring any improvement on the ELA side. So in that case, your focus should be on the math side. Other than that, the other 95 plus percent of test takers, this will have absolutely no impact on you and no effect on your strategy and won't benefit you in the least. So this is by no means a silver bullet. The other problem related to the scaled scored calculations is almost every book, every article you'll read will indicate that there's a maximum scaled score of 400 for each section of the exam or a total of 800 on the composite score for the SHSAT. That is simply not correct. Historically, the highest score for an SHSAT is just over 700, and it's certain that some of these students have achieved perfect scores. So the expectation for a scaled composite score of 800 is not correct. Up until this point, we've learned how the new SHSAT is scored, and we've clarified a couple common misunderstandings around that scoring. Now I'd like to take a moment to look at some of the results of how students actually scored on the exams. But we'll save that for the next video. In the meantime... Adios, chicas. Bye, chicas.